My guest at this time is Assembly Member Rodney Bichette, who recently won election in the Assembly District Number 42. Rodney's won the seat long held by Rhoda Jacobs. Close to 20% of her district, including my home, is made up of Orthodox Jews. So first, welcome to the show, Rodney. Thank you, thank you, Leon. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay. From the moment you started running for office, you and I have had many discussions on educational issues and the lack of fairness and equality and the equity that private school parents have been dealing with. You've expressed yourself many times as being supportive of private education. Although to our great disappointment, you have n so far not sponsored the CUSAC Samana with the EITC bill, but to your mm -hmm. credit, you did sponsor, co-sponsor actually, another lesser known bill right now in the assembly that would give all parents a tax credit per child. Unfortunately, Rockies, as you know, there are many bills in the assembly that while they are well-meaning, will not likely see the light of day. So the mm -hmm. single most important question I could ask you is, how will you be able to make a meaningful contribution to your constituents who desperately need tuition relief this session? Well, first I want to start off by saying that um, um, we did have some conversations about tax credit, tax credit um, and, and private institutions, and I wanted to get a little bit more understanding of the politics We've had Rhoda Jacobs, who's been a, a Jewish uh, assembly member who's been supported by the Jewish community, especially by you, Leon, who has been supporting, um, who's been supported by you guys, who have not supported uh, tax credit uh, issues um, around supporting private schools, as well as um, our speaker, our former speaker, Shel Sheldon Silver, who many members of the Jewish communities and leaders have had a, a lot of um, fundraisers and put him on a pedestal, but again, he was opposed to this tax credit issue. Um, so as a freshman coming in, I did not want to commit to something that I know my Jewish predecessor and Jewish former speaker leader um, did not support, not to mention um, my majority of my district, voting block, is 80%. Although um, the majority of non-Jewish uh, constituents are 90 percent, and they have expressed that they do not want any type of credit deduction or whatever going to private schools, so it puts me in in a in a, in a situation where I have to look at uh, every aspect. Um, I'm a freshman. Um, I did not commit to any type of tax credit. However, um, I did sign on something that Shirley had put forth, which was um, to consider doing a tax credit for all. So I would call it education tax credit for all. This would not only be going to private parochial schools, but this would be going to also um, public school parents. The reason why I support this bill is because, and, and not the other bill, and I'll tell you why I don't support the other bill, is because this particular bill will be benefited, benefiting um, the parents yeah, directly. Right. right. It will benefit their pockets. Whereas, I, I... whereas the other bill um, that Cuomo had proposed initially, and then he kind of tried to merge my bill and his previous bill, the funding will be going to entities, um, and I'm, I'm totally against it going to um, millionaire philanthropists who then cherry pick uh, the schools that they want to to okay. uh, help fund. In so addition to that, right? In addition to that, the majority of my Jewish constituents would not benefit because many uh, of my Jewish constituents, okay, on. are. Yeah, I'm sorry. Many of my and Jewish constituents. I disagree on that. I think that mm -hmm. your constituents would benefit, but we'll get to that. They would. Uh, they would not because there's a lot of poor families. There's a lot of families for a lot of kids. So and guess what? Their, their schools will not be in that network of cherry picking. Okay? Absolutely at, wrong. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, Leon, yeah. to guarantee fairness and equity, I'm for the people. I'm not for institutions who's like, I am for 
the people. And so I want the parents, whether right. Jewish, Catholic, or whatever, I want them to have the benefit. And okay. that's how I see it. And I stand very strong on that. Okay, so now this is the EITC. At the beginning of this year's session, as they've done for the last eight years, the governor just proposed his own tuition plan, which goes even further than the original EITC in providing $70 million, exactly as you said, in tax credits for low-income families, $500 per student. This would be a tremendous uh, deal in our community. And despite what is being said, that is not a, a giveaway to millionaires or billionaires. So I have a few questions. How does 500 going to people who earn under 60,000 qualifies to give away to millionaires? That's basically what you have just said is what you support. In addition to that, $30 million is going to public school teachers. So do you support that part? Well, no, I don't, and I'll tell you why. Because, again, there's low income, there's lower income, and there's the middle class. What happens to the middle class? A, a household can have five kids, okay? So let's say a Jewish household has five kids. One, um, one person is making the income, and let's say he makes 75000 Let's say he makes 80000 Let's say he even makes 100000 He doesn't benefit. The, the proposal that I have put in place did not have an income limit. That means that, again, it's across the board. It's per child. Every child, every we, family will benefit. Um, now, well, what, what Cuomo did, okay, it's all politics. He knew that my bill, which is A6318, um, the Republicans would have loved it. He knew that the Jewish community uh, uh, would have loved it as well. I had spoken to the Orthodox Union. I had spoken to members of um, Azulis Israel. I had spoken to many members of my district. And they were very, um, they were very interested in um, a bill 6318. So, again, that current bill that's being put on the floor is all politics. They want to water down what we put in, the 6318, so that, um, so that there could be a push for his bill. Now, let's talk politics. My assembly members are totally against it. Okay, they're totally against it. For the fair, for the for the mere reason of it being income limited, and also there's that portion, that oh, entity that's still going to a scholarship entity. No, 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 no. According to Governor's bill, the seventy million dollars goes straight to the parents. It's not going to any scholarship fund. It's going straight to the parents. It's a. It, first off, there is a large percentage of our community. First, I definitely agree that I would want to raise the $60,000 per child. In other words, 60000 if you have one child, let's say seventy five or 80000 if you have two, and if you have three, it goes up. Uh, there's no question that we would be in favor of that. But even at $60,000, we did some quick numbers with some of the yeshivas out there, not with the Catholic schools, but the Catholic schools actually have probably a lower income base. And there is a substantial minority of our parents that would benefit. Yes, I would love to have it go up to 150 with five kids, and that would benefit a lot more of our community. But the point is getting a bill passed. The Assembly has not passed a bill, has not brought any tuition relief bill to the floor for even a vote. The vast majority... No, they were considering, they were considering my bill. They were not considering... They were, they were major, there were major issues with... Cuomo's um, bill before and Cuomo's bills now. You have, okay. you, you have to understand, like, sending negative mailers and so forth, it's not going to coerce the assembly members That's to do from what he wants to do. I mean, negative, at the, at, negative mailers are coming from both sides. I've gotten both of them. I know, I know, I know. It's come from both sides. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's not going to coerce the assembly members. We have a new face. Uh, in the assembly, who's the leader? We have many new members, and they're going to stick to their ground. The numbers don't make sense. Means, 60, which means, I, sixty thousand does not work. The sixty thousand does not work. Bring a bill. Let the, the the assembly bring a bill to the floor that meets. I'm very happy to raise the sixty thousand dollars. You're not getting an argument with with me. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Let's bring something to the floor. Let's get a lot of co-sponsors on something. Let's bring it to the floor, and let's get something passed. And then they can sit down, the governor and the Senate and the Assembly, and try to work out a compromise. Mr. Goldenberg, it doesn't work that way, okay? We are not going to present anything to the floor if we do not agree with it. As I mentioned, if we bring said, my bill, said, bring if we bring my floor. bill, 6318, that is something we can certainly work our way up. But so what currently right now, we are not happy with Cuomo's um, bill. We do not support it. We feel that there's a, 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 the majority of the class are cut out of this. The low middle and the middle class is cut out of this bill. We will not support this bill. We will not support this bill. We are not going to dilute what we stand on. We, again, the 6318 that I propose, that is something that I think you and I agree on. We should work on mobilizing to get our constituents to, 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 to get this on the floor. That's that something I think we should work on. Your bill is basically very similar to the governor's portion of the bill that affects the parents. You can bring your bill with a higher limit. Let's bring something to the floor that the assembly does agree on. And maybe in conference when they're working with the Senate and the governor, they may not come to an agreement. But let's see the assembly bring something to a vote, something to the floor. Let's talk about the... Four, over 400,000 children that are in non-public schools, of which the overwhelming majority are tuition. There are 10 percent, maybe 10 percent of the entire. You know, that's on the other side. So I don't you know, even. Lundberg, yeah, you're breaking up. Sorry. I said that the vast majority of the parents that are in those non-public schools of over 400,000 children are drowning under tuition, maybe 10%, probably even less than 10%. Tax-paying families that cannot afford to pee, keep paying tuition on their own, they're paying real estate taxes, they're paying other taxes, and the $150 million that the governor is talking about, all in all, is a pittance, a pittance, in the entire educational bill of $23 billion. It's not even a rounding error in what the, the state, forget about the city and the localities and, and the cities are paying for its education. New York State is spending $21,000 per child on education. $150 million is $300, $400 per child. It would save the taxpayers of New York State an enormous amount of money. Last year, the, 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 the Catholics closed 10 public schools in Buffalo. 3,000 children went into the public schools. There were no new schools built, which meant that those 3,000 kids went into classrooms that may have had 26 kids before and now suddenly have find themselves with 30 and 31 kids. Keeping the private schools open is critical to the health of New York State and, of course, New York City. And there are many members in, in the, in the African-American community that support tuition relief because they are sending their children to private schools, they are sending their children to Catholic schools. It's not everybody that it's the Jews that are in yeshivas and everybody else is in public school. It's not so. We're only as, I mentioned, as, as I mentioned, that's why I support an education tax credit for all. There's no income limit. There's no corporate entity or scholarship entity. Everything is going directly to the family. And that, that is what I support. I do not support the, the bill that um, Cuomo put forth. And, most frank, and quite frankly, most of the assembly members don't. And it's quite ironic how this is a great issue, a big, big issue, and negative mailers are coming forth and so forth, and, and some, some people may be upset at me when, again, let's think about it. Shelly Silver, who's been in office for 20 years, you guys put him on a pedestal, and he didn't even put this on the floor. Okay? Rhoda Jacobs, who was in before me, no one, no one ever pushed her to the way that you guys are pushing me. And then I have to ask, is it because... I'm a woman, black, or whatever. I mean, is it because I'm freshman? It's ridiculous. I expect the same level of respect, and I expect the same standard of understanding. You guys, many of you should, should be very happy that I even am sponsoring a bill.
that's addressing this. Now, mind you, my district is 80%, 90% public school parents, okay? They're not happy at the fact that I even sponsored an education tax credit. They're not happy, and I'm taking the risk. And it's not like um, the majority of the Jewish districts um, had voted for me or supported me, okay? So I honestly don't even have to even... Do you represent your entire district? Do you represent part of the district? I'm sorry? Are you supposed to represent your entire district or only part of the district? I'm representing the entire district, but definitely the people that I listen to are the people who always want to support me because they're the ones who want to vote me in, right? If I have a group of people who, and I'm not saying it's the Jewish community because there were many people from the Jewish community who supported me, but if I had some people who were against me, and you know who I'm talking about, I, why should I listen to people who's not even going to support me? Why should I listen to people who didn't put the same standards on a Jewish woman and a Jewish man, and then put, putting the same, putting a different standard on a black woman? I, I, I am angry about that. I don't like that. Again, at the end of the day, I am the, the, the single African American in the assembly who has been pushing this education tax credit 6318. Okay, what? I have already spoke other members to come on board. Fine, you bring it to the floor. Rodney's, the show is ending. I want to thank you very much. I will be Tuesday. I will be up in Albany. I would love to continue with this conversation with you when I'm up there on Tuesday and get your bill passed. I'm fine with that bill. I have no problem with that bill. Okay. Yes. Forget about Cuomo's bill because the thing is that he's using the bill to water down my bill. We're That's the thing. Forget about, about Cuomo's bill. We're not forgetting about any bills. We're going to work on all bills. Get your bill passed. Sit down with the governor. Sit down with the Senate and work something out. But get okay. a bill not working, getting a bill passed, you can't sit down with them. Rodney's, I want to thank you very much for appearing on this show. And until thank you. We end, uh, have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Leon. Thank you. Thank you.